Hey YouTube, this is your high voltage friend. Um, this is a, kind of a departure from what I normally cover on the channel. I'm going to talk about the ketogenic diet. Now, about uh, maybe nine months ago, I crashed my bike, uh, went flying at about 20 miles per hour onto pavement and really, really goofed up my knee. Um, and basically, it hasn't really recovered since, um, and I haven't been able to exercise so much. So I started gaining weight pretty bad, and started having visions of being one of those people in Walmart that's like, you know, in, in that little electric scooter thing, um, just because I, I couldn't envision any way that I was going to be able to reverse the trend of my weight gain. So a couple friends of mine. Uh, and had success with paleo diets and keto diets and my lady knew about the keto diet that I hadn't tried it yet so we figured we'd give it a shot um, and we've been on it for about four months and I've lost about 49 pounds and she's lost 58 in the same time period um, so I figured I'd you know talk about what it is um, just for anyone who's interested in, in, in possibly losing some weight but uh, losing weight is not the only thing that the keto diet is all about um, in fact even the paleo diet which is a, a lot less hardcore has some similar health benefits um, a couple of them would be uh, if you have epilepsy there is a mountain of research showing that the ketogenic diet is very helpful for reducing or eliminating the frequency of, of seizures uh, if you're type 2 diabetic or perhaps kind of close to it, uh, you can basically return your blood sugar levels down to, um, to about what a normal person's blood sugar is, or maybe even below, and any other um, markers that uh, sort of track diabetes uh, also improve dramatically to the point where uh, you can functionally call yourself a non-diabetic um, and there's also a lot of research on that as well. Uh, the other thing is lowering cholesterol. It, it might seem paradoxical to eat a bunch of fat and have your uh, cholesterol reduced <laughs> significantly and see your heart health improve. Um, but that's exactly what a lot of studies have shown and a lot of trials have shown. And also what a lot of people have reported. Um, there are a lot of people on um, one of the most popular keto forms uh, that have reported getting off of their statin drugs um, in, in order, to, well, basically just because uh, their cholesterol is what it should be um, after, you know, maybe months of, of doing the diet. So um, it's not just useful for losing weight, uh, but it is very effective for losing weight. <laughs> And I have never lost weight this fast in my life. Um, when I was 18, I started riding my bike about uh, 18 to 36 miles a day. I uh, also took some, some diet drugs, uh, you know, ephedrine. And I lost weight at a slower rate than I am currently losing. <laughs> so uh, I would say it's probably the most effective diet for losing weight outside of maybe starving yourself, which isn't fun. So uh, what is keto exactly? It's, it's basically a, a high fat, high protein, extremely low carbohydrate diet. And the, the way it works is that you basically switch your metabolism over from uh, operating off of carbohydrates into operating off of fat and protein, uh, mostly fat. Um, by doing this, uh, your, your blood, say, uh, blood sugar level um, become stable because your body is either uh, operating off of the fat that you have on you or the fat or protein that you're taking in at any time. So um, like when I used to eat a lot of carbohydrates, my energy levels would sort of, sort of do this all day long. Um, <clears throat> and I, I always wondered what was wrong with me because um, a lot of people don't really report having that problem. Uh, although it is, is actually a, a symptom of prediabetes or, or metabolic syndrome. So um, I was experiencing that, and now I have energy levels that are just even uh, all day long, um, unless I have a little bit too much caffeine or a little bit too less, or not enough. <laughs> so um, it works pretty well for me. Um, 
There is a, uh, a mountain research out there for you to look at uh, in terms of epilepsy. In fact, the, the diet was originally developed for epilepsy and diabetes um, patients who, uh, you know, in the 1920s, they did not have such ready access to insulin. Uh, they had not invented many of the, uh, the drugs that type 2 diabetics take and so forth. So what they would do, um, since a diabetic person cannot really handle uh, glucose very well, which is what carbohydrates convert into in the body, um, they would just put them on a diet that did not include glucose. And um, it's sort of like um, if something is poisonous to you, you stop taking the poison, right? It worked, and it, it still works. Um, and epilepsy, I don't really understand how epilepsy is, is cured by it, um, but you can go online and there's actually a lot of research about it. You, you will probably find something about MCT oil, which is um, actually coconut oil uh, and in sort of a liquid formulation. And instead of actually putting someone on a keto diet, what they do is they, they just have them drink this oil and, and not eat anything else. Um, which is kind of like not very fun, <laughs> to, uh, not, not a fun diet to have. Um, but it works great for those people. Um, and there's also a lot of research showing that uh, high fat diets, if you eat the right kind of fats, um, can really improve heart health. And, um, but then we also have opposing things like the, the French paradox where um, uh, people that are French uh, do tend to eat a diet that's high in saturated fat and other fats, and we uh, apparently, our medical knowledge seems to think that this is some kind of paradox where um, they can remain uh, thin and um, not have as much diabetes as we have um, and not have uh, the incidence of uh, heart problems and such. Um, that is just some kind of fluke. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't really think it's a paradox. I think the, the idea that the fat is detrimental is um, not really correct and also not not really uh, supported by very much science. Uh, if you were to go and look for things like uh, saturated fat and heart health links, there's uh, all sorts of methodological errors in the reports and also um, sometimes they can contradict themselves um, and I, it's just not it's not convincing to me um, as far as heart health goes I've always had a wonky heart um, and having been on this diet for a while uh, my my pulse rate is down significantly and so is my blood pressure and I'm not experiencing as many chest pains and when I go to bed at night and kind of uh, rest my hands on you know somewhere where there's a there's an artery I can't feel you know the, the thumping and <laughs> I can't I can't hear the thumping of my own heart uh, as often and I don't exhaust as easily so um, you know those are all indications to me that eating uh, tons of fat has been great for me so <laughs> Uh, it, it may seem to fly in the face of, of uh, common knowledge, but uh, you know sometimes uh, science is wrong, <laughs> and sometimes people have a certain agenda and they want to push it, uh, which can lead to our detriment. Uh, in fact, uh, in the 1970s, there was a character named George McGovern who put together a lot of the food programs here in the United States. He was a vegan. He did not have any training in diet, uh, and what he did was systematically demonize fat. And he created the USDA food pyramid, where you're supposed to eat 60% of your calories from carbohydrates, um, and really, actually, some of the best fats are way at the top of the of the pyramid um, because you're not supposed to eat many of those uh, apparently. Um, and you can actually look at our diabetes rates over time and see that they're mostly flat and sometime around the 1970s afterwards they, they start to curve upwards and you can also search for graphs on our carbohydrate consumption as a country in the USA and see that they also kind of do the same thing and you can also look at um, the uh, heart disease uh, graphs as well and you can see that they also sort of do the same thing and nobody has really um, came up with a good explanation as of why 
I know that correlation does not imply causation, but it's just kind of interesting uh, thing to think about. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're told that we're not supposed to eat um, as much fat and it's bad for us, but uh, here we are not eating much fat and we're suffering all the things that they're telling us that we're going to suffer out if we eat too much fat. So um, there, there's clearly something wrong with that dogma. And my experience and the experience of people doing this diet um, seem to agree that that is incorrect. So let me tell you about the diet a little bit. Uh, first off, I will show you what you can eat, and then I'll show you what you can't eat. Okay, what you can eat, here's our fridge, and we have got, first off, the most critical thing is alcohol, right? Uh, this is a very low carbohydrate alcohol. Um, there are a lot of different beer brands that sell uh, low low uh, carbohydrate and light beers. This is what you would want to drink uh, if you're on this diet. This only has 1.9 grams of uh, carbohydrates, so um, that's kosher. Um, we eat a good amount of olives. Those have great fats in them. Uh, fancy artichoke, that's quite good and quite fatty, which is great on this diet. Um, actually, I usually have some avocados in here, but here's some guacamole. Uh, same thing, right? <laughs> uh, avocados have great health benefits, and you can actually look up those online and find um, all sorts of uh, research papers done on the fact that, you know, all, all the um, monounsaturated fat, and uh, I think it's called polysaturated, uh, those are actually some of the best fats for you, and this is actually a really well well balanced food that can reduce your uh, cholesterol and, and such. So um, <clears throat> you're trying to eat as much as that as possible, but I mean, it does get kind of boring. Um, you got some cold cuts, some sausage. Uh, since we're dual income, no, no kids, we don't end up cooking a lot. So what I do is I, I make um, I make a lot of burgers, uh, stick them in here, and then we just kind of pare those down over the week. And vegetables, broccoli and cauliflower is pretty good. Um, these are low carbohydrate. Uh, they're not particularly the high calorie or anything, but um, they're some of the better vegetables to eat on this diet. Uh, eat lots of cheese, some some hot dogs, usually the more uh, expensive fancy varieties so that you're not eating as much of the nasty uh, parts of the animal. <laughs> um, you gotta watch out for certain dressings they can often have large amounts of sugar in them added this this only has one gram of carbohydrates so if you've got a budget of 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates um, this is perfect it's mostly fat it's got some bacon in it fine enough uh, what else Let's see I, I like tempeh because it um, you can eat soy on this diet but this has less carbohydrates than regular soy it's I, I believe it's uh, partially fermented and um, and it packs a lot of fat and protein which is great uh, for for my tea and coffee I usually use half and half or, or creamer um, and the reason for that is that this actually is more a lot more fat than it is carbohydrate and it's just only got one gram of carbohydrate so about uh, four tablespoons total I'm only getting two grams and and my uh, coffee and tea isn't you know so bitter and acidic anymore so that's a win we also eat a lot of nuts especially almonds they're very tasty these are some more fancy ones from Trader Joe's macadamias these have a great fat profile um, mostly oh it's polyunsaturated and monounsaturated which are both great fats not so much uh, saturated really um, and a little protein and fancy almonds from Trader Joe's again 
And we also sometimes indulge in these when we've got a little extra carbohydrate to spare for the day. And then there's these. These are a little bit on the sweet side. Uh, once you are not used to consuming so many uh, carbohydrates anymore, these will taste incredibly sweet. And you can see it only has a gram of sugar and two grams of net carbohydrates, which actually it might have a little bit more uh, due to the way that Atkins calculates the sugar alcohols, but um, these are safe on the diet. You can have this. This is this is your candy. <laughs> um, and then we're also big fans of the Quest Bar. Um, this is one of the higher net carb ones, but some of them only have two or four net carbs and uh, just gobs and gobs of uh, protein and a good amount of fat. So this is a-okay to eat and it doesn't taste bad at all actually. It's, it's quite good. So what you can't eat. Uh, well, uh, this should be obvious. Grains. <laughs> Um, this is one of the um, one of the grains that is held in, in high esteem, uh, brown rice. This is said to be very healthy and great for you. But the truth is that if you consume a cup of this, you are basically drinking a can of Coke. It's One cup of this has about 40, 50 grams of carbohydrates. That's a lot. If you were to eat like a bowl of this in a sitting, you would be getting uh, 100 carbohydrates or over, and you would get a blood sugar spike that's significant. And that's exactly what I did. I thought the sugar was really quite bad. So I cut sugary things out of my diet and what I would do is I would eat a lot of um, a lot of pasta, rice, um, carrots which have tons of sugar in them, corn, I would eat a lot of that. Well of course that has sugar in it. What do they make high fructose corn syrup out of? Like <laughs> you know it's one of the most potent sugars in the world. Uh, that's that's bad for you even though you know the dietitian will never really point that one out as, as hey, you're eating sugar. <laughs> uh, another thing we don't eat is um, vegetables that are mostly useless, like beans. Um, this has um, quite a bit of carbohydrates in it for how many calories it has. Uh, not really so much fat. A little bit too much fiber. It'll make you miserable and irritate your friends <laughs> if you're around them. <laughs> you know it happens, people. And some protein. Well, I'll give it that. But with only 120 calories uh, and getting um, about half or more of my daily uh, 20 to 30 gram carbohydrate limit, this is just not worth eating. Also, here's green beans. You would think that these are awesome for you, but you know, you know what? The truth is. This is mostly sugar. This has very little protein. It has two grams of sugar and no fat. Um, it does have nutrients in it. I'll give it that. But this is not one of the highest carbohydrate vegetables, but it's really not worth eating. Here's one of the big offenders is tomatoes. These are almost all sugar. Uh, you see we have no fat. 2 grams of protein, and then we have 6 grams of carbohydrates, and only fully 40 calories. <laughs> so you would expend your uh, daily carbohydrate limit very fast if you were to eat a lot of tomatoes or, or have a thing of uh, tomato sauce, you know, with pasta. Um, one thing you could do to get around uh, the whole pasta thing is Alfredo sauce. This is very fatty and does not contain many carbohydrates. You will see it has eight grams of fat, two grams of carbohydrate, and four grams of protein. This is very, um, very good for a keto diet. And then also, shirataki noodles. This is uh, made of tofu and I uh, forget what else. I think it's cognac. Yeah, yam flour. Yeah, these aren't really the same, <laughs> but they're a little, um, maybe a little on the chewy side, but they're not too bad. I mean, I, I've put together a pretty awesome pasta with these and uh, fooled myself into thinking I was eating carbohydrates, so <laughs> that's good enough. So, um, yeah, basically, ketogenic diet has worked out great for me. And if you're interested in, in more information, then go look up, uh, search for Keto, K-E-T-O, on reddit.com, 
R-E-D-D-I-T. And that, there's a variety of good resources on that. You can also pick up the Atkins books, although um, I'm not really a big fan of them. They, they make the diet out to be more complicated than it actually is, and, and they're really written like a, like a diet book. Um, and they try to sort of segment your diet into, into weeks, I think, or maybe it's days, and give you these recipes of things to eat and make. And it's just really not that complicated. Uh, the only thing you need to do is to limit your carbohydrates and figure out what you can eat and what you can't. Um, so those are, uh, those are two of the good resources. Um, actually, at the end of the Atkins books, there's a lot of testimonies that are interesting and, and some insights about, about um, eliminating diabetes, which you, if you have a problem with that, you might find uh, useful. Um, and, and you know, this, this diet is not without any controversy. There are a lot of people that will always pop up to try to discredit something that you know, becomes popular and uh, sounds out of the ordinary. Um, so I already mentioned the thing about fat. Uh, a lot of people will tell you that eating a lot of fat is really bad for your heart. Um, pretty much anyone who's been on a ketogenic diet would disagree. And I can't find a single report of someone's heart actually doing worse after doing the diet, even like really long term. So you, um, yeah, I looked that one up and, and <laughs> come to your own conclusion, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm biased. <laughs> um, another thing is um, they will often uh, make statements about uh, liver health being affected by it. Um, I have not actually heard of anyone having liver problems. Um, the thing with the ketogenic diet is that you switch from using your pancreas primarily or using your liver as uh, sort of uh, metabolizer, I guess. Um, you can have liver problems if you're dehydrated. Now, if you're dehydrated, drink water, right? Uh, but also, your electrolyte uh, needs are a little bit higher on the diet. So here's your solution. This is half sodium, half potassium. Now, if you just eat something that has magnesium in it and and some calcium, which you know we get through dairy products pretty commonly, um, you're pretty much covered. Uh, GNC sells this, and this is great. Um, this has pretty much the highest amount you can legally buy, which is about maybe 25%, I think, of your daily intake all in one pill. So that's good. Otherwise, you can like salt the heck out of things. Um, and actually, not getting enough electrolytes in the diet is actually a problem. Uh, usually in the first couple weeks of dieting, people do have a problem with, with things like just cramping in their legs and stuff. It's just because they're not used to um, not used to having to get so much of that stuff in. Um, a lot of a lot of great food is actually they add in certain nutrients that you're going to have to uh, get other sources from. And I take a daily multivitamin just like I did on uh, on, on the other diet, and you know, and occasionally take some potassium when I'm fine. Now, if I neglect my potassium and magnesium, I'm going to start getting cramps in my legs and stuff. That's literally the worst thing that's ever. Um, resulted as of switching over to this, this diet. So I don't really know about if there's anything about liver. I, just, I know that there's some concerns about electrolytes, and then you're going to have to read up if you're interested um, in doing the diet and, and you know, figuring out how, how much you need and what are the signs of when you don't have enough. And, and um, other than that, it's, it's easy to manage. I don't know. Blood test of myself for potassium or anything. <laughs> um, it's just that you, you need to get more than, than you normally would. Um, another common thing is that uh, ketosis, uh, which is the fat metabolism, is basically starvation. That is completely untrue. <laughs> Um, basically, it's just another alternate uh, mechanism. Now, if you're starving, yes, you're in ketosis because your body's fat is the only thing you can live off of. But if you're eating a bunch of fat, it's calories, right? Your body can metabolize it and turn it into energy. And that is just what it does. It, it uses your own fat or whatever fat or protein you're taking into it and converts it to energy. 
so it's not starving yourself because you're actually eating and you're eating things that metabolize. <laughs> Um, another another common fallacy is that um, your brain needs glucose and can't survive without it. Well, that doesn't really explain how the Eskimos and um, some of the Plains Indians manage to basically just eat fat all their life and not die. <laughs> uh, you, your blood sugar is stabilized on this diet and your body will produce the amount of glucose that your body needs. It will also run your um, some parts of your brain off of ketones, which is uh, what result from ketosis. And actually, there are a lot of um, studies out there showing the brain operates better on ketosis. In fact, I am a programmer and a web developer, and I noticed that my brain operates a little bit better. I can um, basically program things that are just a bit more complex and focus better, and I have a little more endurance in, in terms of just sitting there and practicing crunching and logic problems and numbers and stuff. So for me, if my brain was dying, I would not be able to do my job. So I don't think that that is exactly true <laughs> by any means. Um, what other kind of fallacy on there? Oh yes, um, the difference between ketoacidosis and ketosis. These are two different things. Ketosis is a form of metabolism. Ketoacidosis is a um, runaway condition that will kill a type 1 diabetic. They are often confused because a keto stick, which is a, a way to measure um, ketones through the urine, is often used to uh, measure a diabetic's um, ketoacidosis, basically, to see if they're in danger. Um, and so this actually also measures ketones, which are proof that you are in a state of ketosis, as in you are burning fat as your primary fuel source. Since this tool measures both things, it is easy to, I guess, cross-associate, but they are quite different. One kills you, and one is what your body does naturally. In fact, even if you're eating uh, a good amount of carbohydrates, your body will use um, fat as, as a metabolism to keep you basically you know, alive while you sleep and while you're not eating. So people who eat a high carb diet, even, even vegans, um, they're in ketosis at night. It's not killing them. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Might have covered them all, but um, if, if there are any others that you hear about, or if you actually want some some advice or help, motivation or whatever on the keto diet, feel free to send me a little message on on YouTube, and I will respond to you. Um, I mean, the only reason I'm making this video is because I want to save some people uh, from from diabetes and being fat. You know, like sort of like me. It's you know when I when I discovered it, I was like, oh wow, I, I can't believe this works. You know. I would step on the scale and be like, whoa, holy shit, <laughs> you know, and, and I, I want other people to um, sort of break out of the, uh, the American dietary matrix that, that's just killing us all, so um, yeah, I, I'm totally happy to answer some, some questions. Uh, if you leave some crappy comments that are misinformed, I will probably delete them. I know that there are a lot of people who are very much against this diet, especially vegans, because they think that it means you must eat all sorts of uh, tasty, beautiful furry animals. The truth is, you do not have to do that. There is actually a thing called vegetarian keto, and you can get by just fine uh, without eating animals. So. Yeah, thanks for listening.